Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth me. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. Matt's coming. No. When do we start? Happy 25th episode. That's like, that's, that's silver or gold or the, which, uh, which episode? I think it's the paper anniversary. The paper anniversary. The five is wood. Hey, hey, hey fifth anniversary, you're going to give me some wood. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone does any of that. that no, was, but that's that was you're sexy, to... right? You we yeah. had an intro. We do. I like the way my name is said. I, do you, and we don't have to sit here. Do you want to go to a club? Do you want, do you want to dance? <laughs> do you want to have good times? Sh- should we, should we grind? Um. But, I mean, not, no, not, not you together. No, no, no. Yeah. No, I like it. That way I don't have to sit here and listen to, to eight takes of Welcome to the Inner <laughs> <Yeah>. Podcast. <laughs> no, Central like... Man's only comic book bleepity blop. <laughs> what did I say? I know. I have yeah. to work on a new intro now because now we got. What did I say last week? <laughs> I can't remember. We got a real intro now. Inter- okay, anniversary gets by year. All right. What's 25? Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, fifth is wood. Fifth is wood in the traditional. Silverware is the modern one. Uh, 25th is silver. It's the silver episode of the show. Uh, other interesting ones. Feelings you can dig out. Uh, on the 11th, there was steel. Didn't give me any steel. The third episode is leather. I think you do have some leather that you own. Mostly pleather. Yeah, looking forward. Oh, the 14th. We were past the 14th. Animals is the 14th. You're supposed to get an animal on the 14th. <laughs> Look, we have enough animal-related issues on the show. The dog ate my notes. <laughs> this is a huge chunk. Missing out of your notes. I, I hope. I think he mostly missed what I wrote down. But yeah, the dog ate my notes. Kirby. I like him a lot, except for when he eats your stuff. Well, like when I come home, like you have never seen someone so excited just to see you. That dog is happier to see me. Are you just saying in general you've never seen anyone excited to see you? <laughs> that dog is so happy. He's just like you're home. Yeah. Well, I like, showed up tonight. He was all up. He, I sat down on the couch, opened a beer, and he mauled me. <laughs> so I want it. I want it now. And it was a Bud Light. You obviously have some training to do for your, your animal. He eats trash all the time. That's that's <laughs> his gig. Well, he's a puppy. He's so excited about just like, he's home! It's like, oh my god. Like, no one has ever been that happy to see me. I must eat the trash! Yeah. It's like, I'm so happy I'm eating your nose! <laughs> Look what I got for you! <laughs> but I think he mostly missed what I wrote down, so we're probably good. Maybe I miss a news story. Can you, can you believe that we are actually, this is our 25th episode of the show? Yeah, we got there. 25 weeks. This is a journey we started a long time ago. No 25 money, weeks yeah. ago. No money. We still have no money. No no discernible well, source Well, I always see income. that stuff. It's like, do something for free until someone's willing to pay you. That's how I always look at this show. Fair enough. Um, I'm trying to think of things I would do for free until someone was willing to pay me. God, but this is a family-friendly podcast, so I can't respond. A couple of weeks up. I think it's October 23rd, if that's a Sunday. That would be a... Sunday, because I believe the 22nd is Saturday this year. I'm going to be down at the Portland Comic Expo. I haven't done that show before. Hopefully it'll be a good time. If you're looking to do something nice on October 22nd for Jared, I'd love it. It'd be my birthday. Just a plug? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to tell people about what you're doing in the future. I'm going to let people know on well, October 22nd. I saw some people didn't know about this. Shopping but... days still remain. But I'm on their website, and I was like going through the list. I'm like, oh my god, they have like some great guests going. You know, people who have a pretty good careers, but there's this one I'm really excited about. I'm like, oh my god, like I know that guy's name. Like, yes, I will be, I will be appearing at the Portland Comic Book Show yeah. to discuss this very podcast. I see um, Paul Ryan's on there, not that Paul Ryan. Oh, not the politician. No, not him. Not the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yes, not that one. I, I wonder if he's a comic book fan. The guy loves to work out. Maybe he's a comic book fan. Okay, which Paul Ryan? Exhale. Okay. Um. But he's the guy who illustrated the first Flash book I ever read, oh. which is my first DC book. And there's a couple of books out there. It's like I really want to get art from just because they're these kind of milestone books for me. Not a huge name in the industry, but still for me, I got an affection for him. Like, oh, cool. I can meet Paul Ryan, all this stuff. The worst case scenario, just signs the book. Maybe I can like get some contact information from him. Yeah, he's dead. He's very dead. That website needs to be updated. <laughs> because it was updated July 14th. 2016? Yeah. I don't know if the information they have on there is 
for their last expo, or he died after signing up for this one. But <laughs> like, oh, oh, they have a Facebook page. The one guy I was excited to see. Yeah, he's dead. I'm sorry. That does sound kind of. Uh, I guess this isn't the networking opportunity I was hoping for. Oh, let's see. I'm I'm going to the Facebook group right now. So either they haven't updated their website, he signed up for it ahead of time, or. I found a time portal into the past. It's Maine's largest and longest running uh, anime and gaming convention. Dead guys are listed as our guests. Oh, there's a picture of somebody dabbing? I don't know. I'm going to be down in Portland on October 23rd. Oh, cool. Maybe it's a different Maybe it's a different con that you're going to I, than the one I found. I gave them money. Oh. I'll be there. Oh. Even if even if it's a, it's a con and it's not there, you'll be outside like the main mall or something <laughs> trying to show your stuff. Did you guys know there's another comic book store out there? It's me! In Central Maine. Maybe we'll find the find the address and tag it on the show or something. Or just stop by the shop when you pick up a clink bag. Uh, yeah, please do. Um, and just so we're clear, basically every Hannaford in the state has the clink program. Because I've had people like, oh, what is this? Like, I go to Hannaford and we don't have that. And then I look up their Hannaford and I'm like, yeah, you do. If you go to a Hannaford, you probably have clink in the state of Maine. There's a giant, like, Clink Depot outside the Gardner Hannaford. Yeah, there is. I remember that from when uh, we like used to trip. live right next to the Gardner Hannaford. <laughs> when we were neighbors. When we were neighbors. <laughs> when we shared a driveway. We shared a driveway. My liver took a beating. <laughs> and you would just yell at me like Marlon Brandon, like, Stella! When you would, like, you would... Stop yelling Stella! My name's Zach! Whatever. When you would actually text me like, hey, where are you going, buddy? <laughs> when I was watching you. I saw your car leave the driveway. What you doing? I've got it at my window, and it's like my apartment was on the opposite side of the building, so you couldn't see my apartment. You couldn't, it's like, although I saw all, like, the people that lived in the dementia home next door, so I had that going for me. <laughs> the news! Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Where should we start? Marvel, DC, in between? Let's go in between. Okay, it was just Marvel. Oh, wait, no, there is an in-between. Okay. <laughs> I found one, but it's kind of DC. Fair enough, let's do it. Are you aware of Mel Gibson? I've heard of the man. Melanie Gibson? I heard that... Mulan Gibson? I, I heard that Mel Gibson called uh, Batman v Superman a piece of shit. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yes. What are you doing, Mel? He's He hasn't been angry at anything in a while. <laughs> then he asked what was up with Wonder Woman Sugar Tits. Wait, seriously? No, that just happened with a police officer. Oh, uh, well, I was going to say, he has a history of calling people sugar tits. I don't know what that phrase means, but he uses it. He's Mad Max, dude. He can do what he wants. He's the old Mad Max. We moved on to a better Max. There's a movie coming out with him, though, that looks like it's pretty badass. Yeah, it was, and that's where this came out of. He was being interviewed for that, and somehow that came up. He's like, green screen, I don't understand it. I don't know why it costs so much money. Because of all the technology like, and, like, the thousands of people that are used to, like, design, operate, animate, like, huh? goes on the green screen. Six months later, you're really hopping on the bandwagon, Mel. Wow. That trendsetter, Mel Gibson, speaking speak the people's mind when the people are afraid to speak it themselves. Boy, he makes it hard to watch movies that he's a part of. Can you, like, go back, like, are you able to, like, go back and watch, like, Lethal Weapon movies and disassociate, like, racist, anti-Semitic Mel Gibson? Not really. It's a good movie. Well, I'm trying to think of what else Mel Gibson was in that I found enjoyable. Patriot, Braveheart. Oh, yeah, Braveheart. Could you watch can you What watch Women Want? Oh. The classic What Women Want. He could read women's minds. You know, that's a superpower I could get behind having. What about Braveheart? Could you watch Braveheart and not be like... I watch Braveheart in years, be, mostly because he's such a friggin' weirdo. In Braveheart? No, or just, just because... in life. He's one of those people I can't really like, get behind anymore. Patriots, okay. It's not really Patriots actually kind of crap. It's actually not really historically accurate in any way, shape, or form. Patriots a crap movie. You're right. It kind of sucks. They tell me there's one guy and two little kids took out a whole garrison of British soldiers on a road and then chopped them up into little bitty bits. I did like the movie Maverick. The Lethal Weapon movies are still I like enjoyable. That Simpsons episode he's in. That's all I can say for you, Mel. Well, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome is pretty cool. No, it's not. That movie's... Oh, no, was it wasn't Beyond Thunderdome. It was, uh... What Mad Max did we watch on Christmas? Mad Max 2. Oh, yes. A couple of Christmases ago. <laughs> yeah. When we used to have the Christmas tradition of I was happy to be by myself and you were sad to be alone. 
Yes, pretty much. <laughs> it's like, yes, no people. You were like, no people. There are no uh, people. <laughs> a Christmas tradition. And it, and it rained both Christmases. Christmas was snow. That wouldn't kill anybody. Um, it was announced today that there's going to be a movie based on Stan Lee's life produced by Fox. Really? But not just any movie. It's going to be set in the 70s, and it's going to be an action-adventure movie. That's a hyper-reality wow. movie based on Stan Lee's life that isn't anywhere near based on Stan Lee's life. Okay. And it's an action-adventure movie done by Fox. Oh, we all know Fox. how you feel about Fox. Oh, my Hold God. On. What? Hold on. Hold on. Just, I want to hear me out for a second. All right? If ever you ever crap on me for poo-pooing an idea again, I'm going to remind you of this moment. I'm just saying, when I when I crapped on the idea of a Star Wars Avengers crossover, you said I wasn't having fun and I wasn't being open-minded. To me, I'm hearing a lot of closed-mindedness and anger. Maybe we need to have a, a, a session where you just... I'll give you the whole couch. You can lay back. I'll, I'll stand up with the microphone. Or I can and complain you can, about Fox. You can complain about well, or anything. Speaking of Fox, I got a little bit sad this week. <laughs> You're just running the whole dichotomy of emotions. Last week I mentioned that Black Lightning was being shopped around by Greg Berlanti. I'm sorry to say it has ended up at Fox. Wow. You're handling this much better than the Stanley thing. Well, I just got sad. I'll give you an example of Fox. Fox has a weekly Batman show. I don't watch that. Fox. That should be everything you need to know about my feelings on TV programs that Fox produces, or even films Fox produces. Uh, Fox has The Simpsons. They're given a lot of freedom. Well, I would hope so. They've been given a lot of freedom for a very long time. You know, Black Lightning Show, I'm like, you know, not a character I'm about, but I like the stuff that Berlanti produces and all this, and then, like, it ended on Fox. Fox is a dirty three-letter F word, isn't it? Yeah. I just want to make absolutely clear for the purposes of, like, my self-preservation, I don't necessarily hold, harbor, or share the same views that Zach does about Fox. Just saying. Speaking of Greg Berlanti, the rumor has been, which came out, that he is going to be directing a Booster Gold movie. Is it going to be with Fox? Unfortunately. Wow. It's a lot. No, no it's not. Um, for those who don't know, Booster Gold is a DC character who is kind of pretentious and rich, and he comes from the future to go back to the golden age of superheroes so he can make a name for himself. Oh. He's, got, he's a fun character. There's, there's going to be a Booster Gold movie for Berlanti's first directorial debut, and like I said, he's the hardest working guy in Hollywood right now. He's doing like five or six shows and this movie. The man is insanely busy and possibly a robot. Like Michael J. Fox was when he was filming Family Ties and Back to the Future at the same time. But then three times as much as that. Dude, he was like filming Family Ties and then like getting shuttled off to work on Back to the Future till like three or four in the morning. Yeah. And like two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep, and then going to work on Family Ties all day. Berlanti runs six shows and he's doing a movie. Good for him. That's insane. That is. That's that's crazy. But Booster Gold is not going to be part of the DCEU. It will stand alone on its own, which I thought was kind of disappointing. Right now the DCPU. Yes. It's, what, it's no good. See what I did there? I did. Yeah. I didn't need to censor myself because <laughs> I know how to use adult words. But kind of a disappointment, but I'll still take a Booster Gold movie. It should be something that's a little bit fun. James Cameron came out this week. He said that the Avatar... Oh, did he? Congratulations, James. Yeah. Uh, for the three Avatar sequels that are happening, he said they're going to be all about family. Apparently, Jake and Natiri are going to have some kids. It'll be kind of a generational film. How can that happen? Because he's a human, she's not. Because they put his brain inside of his weird clone body. Because his human body's dead now. Okay. Will it be good? I don't know. This is coming from the man who has made many revolutionary movies, but also said Terminator Genesis was good. Of course he's going to say it's good. It's his franchise. It's not an endorsement like he's like being paid to be nice about the movie. He owns the rights to the Terminator franchise, so he's going to get any... any of the No, he doesn't. He doesn't anymore? No, they will revert to him. I forget when they're going to revert to him. So he wants them to make money now, so they're viable later. Yeah, the rights revert to James Cameron in a few years. I forget what it is, uh, because, boy, are the Terminator movies as dead as can be. 
I don't think I've ever been so angry at a movie as when I was in Terminator. That set me off within like the first forty five seconds. Well, that doesn't that didn't take long at all. You didn't give it much of a chance at all. They set me off with continuity and ugh, it didn't get better from there. Just once, just once, I want to be in the theater and have you like a crappy movie and just like stand up and say this sucks and walk out. I like loudly and aggressively proclaim the crappiness of the movie. I think the only movie I've ever walked out of was Pirates of the Caribbean 4. I did not see Pirates of the Caribbean 4. I left. I was like, eh, that's enough. 3 was a stretch. I liked 1 and 2. I left in the middle of 4. I'm like, nope, done. I don't even care. Why did you go to the theater to see that one? I had some faith in the franchise, and I just left. Oh. They were fun and whimsical, the first couple were. The third one was just weird. Joe Manganiello? Manganiello? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It came out that he has been cast as Deathstroke. We saw that test footage that came out a couple of weeks ago. He was someone who was campaigning really hard to be Superman a few years back because he's kind of a beefcake. You may remember him as uh, Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson from the Spider Man movies. In which, okay, where he, he got his ass kicked by Peter Parker. But you know, it's really, um, he was on the Pete Holmes show, which didn't last super long. But I guess Toby Newire was kind of insufferable on that set and crew members are paying him money like punch him for real just punch him well he did get kind of whiny as peter parker even on the first movie like just punch punch that 35 year old playing a high school student you know what the hardest thing to watch in a movie is toby mcgar toby mcgar crying but i mean as far as full length experiment movies to date he's the best one we've had yeah, I like I said, full length. Although I, yeah. I did like Andrew Garfield, I'm not going to lie. I also didn't buy that 35-year-old in high school. No, no. I did buy all of Kirsten Dunst, though, in the rain. Her wig? I, I don't care that it was a wig, man. Everything else is real. So fake. That wig. Yeah, so what? I, don't care. I was looking at her wig back in 2000. And 2000? Was it 2000 when that movie came out? 2001? Right around there. Whenever that movie came out, I was I was not paying attention to the wig. I'll tell you that much. Josh Brolin, Thanos himself, has started showing up for Avengers Infinity War rehearsals. Ah. Oh. End of news. He's in a mocap suit. Well, yes. I wouldn't think he was going to be like purple and walking around like well, the guy who prosthetics. Um, the guy who did the quick cameo in the first Avengers, he was mostly in prosthetics. And then Josh really? Brolin did mostly... CG for his Guardians appearance in Avengers 2. But something I think is interesting about him so far is he's been fully singular. We haven't really got a good sense of scale on him. Yeah. Like, every shot of him has been him by himself. We don't know how big he's going to be. That's a good point. Very, very good point. I like Josh Brolin. He's really, really good. Uh, Men in Black 3, he did a really good job of like playing. Yeah, he made that crap really bearable. Good job. No, but he like was a spot on younger Tommy Lee Jones. I thought he was. He was really good in that. That movie's garbage, though. I wasn't saying it was a good movie. One day you're gonna say, "Oh yeah, I like that movie." On this show, people listening, if they're in their car, there'd be an accident. We're gonna read about a multi car pileup in the central main area, and the cause is gonna be you liking something, and somebody listening to the podcast loses all control, loses all bodily function. You know something that I bet I'm gonna like is. What? The biggest spectacle movie of all time, according to Chris Pratt, referring to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That does look like it's going to be... That he was like, that's not hyperbole. It's going to be awesome. I'm... So, oh my god, if it wasn't for Vin Diesel being drunk on wine all the time, I'd be... Like, I'm so on board for that movie. Some Wolverine 3 news. Teased at the end of that last X-Men movie that, hey, I hated that. Mr. Sinister will be in Wolverine 3. Will he be the main villain? Or will it be a cameo? He sounds sinister to me. Yeah, it's a terrible name. He's a good character, but his name and design, not good. His name is Mr. Sinister. I you mean, I think it's pretty out there that he's not a good guy. We got our first look at Ghost Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, uh, standard fare, skull on fire, really no defining facial features. What would happen if he was shirtless? Would there be a body under there, or would he just be a flaming skeleton? That's a good question. More importantly, how is the rest of his clothing not catching on fire? These are all good questions that I don't have answers to. Oh, I mean, I guess leather. I don't know, leather. Like, how low does the skeleton thing go? Well, 
That's a, I don't know. Also, if he's all skeleton, like from the neck down, he really wouldn't have a waist. So, like, his pants would be falling down. They could pull his belt tight. It would look kind of like a. That'd be a really awkward scene. Every time he turns to the Ghost Rider, he has to cinch his pants up. Yeah. Like, like ah, yeah. God, I'm going to lose him. Here, Here we go again. You're going to see my thigh bone. Oh, no, not my femur. He looks fine. It's yeah, because if you get rid of like all the sinew and muscle and skin and just like go to straight skeleton, like everything's got I mean nothing left. It doesn't look any better or any worse than the Nick Cage movies. It's Did you like the Nick Cage movies? Nope. nope. <laughs> yeah. No. As I was no, starting to ask that question, oh. I realized the futility of it. No I in all fairness I didn't see the second one. I'm gonna say probably terrible. But to, like to clarify that Zach doesn't hate every movie. He's got a large shelf of like probably a uh, hundred movies over here. That's right. There was a time that I thought I was up and moving for a little bit, and I sold so so many movies. Yeah, I remember you used to have tons and tons of movies. Oh no, it's fairly conservative now. Oh, um, looking at the your wall of movies, I saw so I saw the uh, I was just perusing the internet. I saw the um, the trailer for Tusk, uh, not for Tusk, but uh, for Yoga Hosers. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, not a lot to say there. It's playing like an hour away from us. It's not worth seeing. Have you seen it? I'm not going to drive an hour to see it. Oh. I thought you were a big Kevin Smith guy. I'm not driving an hour. Oh. If it was closer, yeah, I'd go see it, but I'll see it when it comes out. But it was a really really nice thing on uh, Yahoo. They're like, Harley Quinn, his daughter, was interviewing him, and she asked him who his favorite uh, actor or actress to work with, and he said it was her. Because of like he was like really jaded about the movie process and all of like critics and stuff like Affleck. that. Affleck. Oh, I like Affleck. But no, he like goes on to say like she like the way she like was in the movie and acted and was having fun really meant the world to him and kind of like she, he said saved her or saved him, which I didn't realize. I haven't seen Tusk, but I didn't realize that that had Johnny Depp in it and Johnny Depp's daughter. Yeah, because I I watched. I watched Tusk, I'm like, hey, I just watched this movie, Tusk, and I like told you about it. You were really drunk, you were like, it's not a Kevin Smith movie, it's no Jay and Bobby, it's not comedy, it's not no Kevin Smith movie, and then you staggered home because we were neighbors. Yeah, I didn't have to stagger very far. <laughs> no. Is it a good movie? Um, it's... It's okay. Is it funny? It's okay. Is it... It is solidly Okay. Oh, we found something Zach doesn't extremely outright and unjudiciously hates. It's a movie that wants to sell itself as a B-movie, but you can't force yourself into being a B-movie. You just have to be a B-movie. Fair enough. That makes any sense? Yeah. Like, like the Machete movies. They are... They are... Uh, that's in the same kind of camp of we are forcing ourselves to be this thing that we're not necessarily because we have a lot of studio backing and... We're trying to be camping over the top. And oh, but it's so over the top, and it's so amazing, and I love Machete, but and Machete kills. I mean, and I like Robert Rodriguez's stuff, and he's kind of from the same, like, early 90s camp of the indie director that Kevin Smith is, but yeah, the whole idea of... The Grindhouse we're, the movie. We're forcing ourselves to be this thing that we're not. So, in my book, Tusk is pretty okay. Oh, that's, you know, that's not... Oh, god awful or exciting. It's just, yeah, it's there. It is what it is, and frankly, I'll support anything that isn't necessarily a reboot or a franchise movie. If you want to try something different, go for it. I'll always back that. All right. This diversion brought to you by. I'm all for originality. ADD. What else we got? Let's go over to the world of. D- Fox. No, we're done with Fox. Okay. We're going over to Warner. Oh. The, the Warner Brothers. The people of the WB. Jeff Johns, who has taken on the Kevin Feige role for Marvel, came out and he was like, yeah, we're kind of changing the tone. Um, but he said it a little more positively. Like, towards, like, more, like, colorful and upbeat, or... Well, what he said was, um, executives in the past have looked at DC movies and been like, these are dark and gritty, and that's what makes them different from the Marvel movie. Well, he didn't say Marvel, he said, from other comic book movies. He goes, and that's wrong. What these movies should be what DC is all about is being hopeful. Like, even Batman. If Batman didn't believe that he was making a better tomorrow, he wouldn't do it. But the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight movies were dark and gritty. I still like them. I I didn't say I disliked them. What's your favorite of the three? The first one? 
Batman Begins? Yeah. Really? It's an interesting take on the Batman origin. And I'll... There are more interesting parts of Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, but from a story perspective, Batman Begins has the fewest gaping holes. And it kind of does have a nice little tidy arc to it. And some of it doesn't really make sense. Like the whole evaporating the water thing. Like, what if you were just boiling a pot of water for spaghetti? It's, yeah, yeah, I get that. It's a great point. <laughs> it's a great point. But it, it has the fewest holes. It has the most complete arc. There are other parts of the sequels that have better sequences or even better acting. But I was as a movie, as a whole, Batman Begins is probably my favorite of the three. I've always wondered if Heath Ledger hadn't passed away, if the Joker would have been in Dark Knight Rises. I doubt it. But who knows? But yeah, Jeff Johns is kind of like, look, Batman's going to be less murdery and we're going to go for a bit lighter because these characters are hopeful. Jeff Johns is a creator that I generally like, but he's also coming from that generation of creators who grew up with DC Comics. And he's a very status quo kind of guy. He's like, we're going to go back to what I grew up with and what I love and like things need to be the way they were. Sometimes people like familiarity. Yeah, that's very much Jeff Johns. It's not, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of his go-to. But moving on, we are going to go to the topic of this week. This will be our first TV episode. 25 episodes in, this is our first TV one. Thankfully, you've watched all of it. Me? Yeah, you. Are you calling me out again? Absolutely calling you out. I gave you a month. I, I'm, I jerry-sixed it. For if knowledge is power, then a god... It's time to get an editor's education. So this week, what we're going to talk about, instead of giving a straight review, because at this point you've definitely seen the show. If you haven't, what's wrong with you? Well, well look at me. I mean, that's 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 a series in itself. But we're going to talk about the differences in the Jessica Jones series from the comic books. See, I have no idea about the comic books. I can tell you about the first two episodes. <laughs> you should have given them a number. What? Two! I watched two! Uh, I wanted to feel, like, somewhat accomplished. Man, that's a dark show. You get that right in the first Oh my, of- yeah, like, well, right out of the gate, she's, like, following these people in a in a parking garage, having an affair, getting on in the parking garage, like, right away. People are getting shot in the head. Oh my well, God. no, we didn't even get to the, you know, that's, that's, this. This show, there's a lot of sex. There's a lot of humping in this show. It's not... I mean, it's relatively graphic for television, but... But yeah. it's not television. It's on Netflix. It's a Netflix series. They get nominated for Emmys that counts as television. But, I mean, right away, this guy is getting it on. And then we find out that like she's like a private detective, like, following these people around. The like the first people she's following around, the guy, like, her client, it was his brother sleeping with his wife. Yeah, that's not good. No, and then, then he gets thrown through a window for his trouble. That's right out of the books, that shot of throwing a client through ho- that shot of her throwing a client through the window that's right out of the books it's dark it's a dark show it's like edgy they just won some emmys did they really yeah it's the first marvel show to win emmys it just happened but i want to go back a little bit jessica jones is a, still a relatively new character to marvel she came around in 2001 in the series alias written by brian michael bendis not the alias tv show no we covered this last week. I'm just rehashing. But before that, Jessica Jones was not a character in Marvel, and what um, they ended up doing was writing her into the history. They had her going to high school with Peter Parker, and she had a crush on him. Like she wanted to ask him out, like right when he got bit by a radioactive spider. She's like, "Ah, wife, I've been rejected by this guy who's running away, crying out in pain, man." I'm not the only freak in the school anymore. Well, she didn't have powers at that time. Um, she had um kind of intentionally, generically written superhero origin. She was in a car accident where chemicals spilled on her, then whoops-a-daisy, she got powers. So I'm going to home tonight. If I see a chemical truck, I'm going to swerve into it. Hopefully chemicals spill on me. I get bit by a radioactive spider, and I have powers. I wouldn't recommend it. You don't think it's going to work out that way? No. Do you think it would end badly for me? Yes. So Jessica Jones was not previously established in the Marvel Universe. She came in, like I said, they kind of rewrote history a little bit with her. Uh, some differences with the show. You met Patsy Walker. Yes. Which one, which one is she? The blonde chick. Oh, yes, the blonde chick. 
<laughs> Good. That, I'm so glad you added so much there. Like, oh, blanche. I listen. I was trying to like watch this, do some work at the same time. It's it's not easy. I can't just. I'm not a very good TV watcher, I'm not going to lie. In the original Alias books, her best friend was not Patsy Walker, it was Carol Danvers, who you'll see in the upcoming Captain Marvel movie, but given that Marvel is moving forward with that property, they switched it out for another character. Patsy Walker, I think, has probably one of the most interesting histories within Marvel Comics, though, or just comics in general. Marvel originally was publishing Patsy Walker comics in the 1940s, she came around in 1944 in these romantic comedy books that they were putting out. Oh, I like the rom-com. Like, You've Got Mail? Yeah, but and then in the 70s, her romantic teenage love books went on for a while. But in the 70s, they introduced her into the Avengers as Hellcat. I know that name. And the way they ended up retconning it was all these romantic books that like she was in as a teenager were stories that her mother wrote and were publishing. I'm trying to think of the name of a romantic comedy, because I was just thinking like we're like Christmas is fast approaching, so that romantic comedy that uh, has all those people in it, it's not saying anything. Love Actually. Yeah, Love Actually. Yeah. I hate myself for knowing that. Yeah, say anything's a band. Love Actually is. Uh, yeah, that viewing season for Love Actually is coming around. So, like what you see in Jessica Jones the TV show is like the mother wrote a series of books all about Patsy Walker. She was in a TV show. But in Marvel Comics, like, within continuity, all those old romance comics are things that her mother wrote about her. So she's this, she has a really weird history going from, like, romance to superhero, and then retconning all those old stories into the history itself. It's really weird, but kind of fascinating. Uh, she was introduced in 1944 by Otto Binder. If you want to go be depressed, go look up his life. <laughs> ah, boy. Is it sad? It's insanely sad. Can we can we move on like happy things? Yeah, if you want to go look him up, go look him up in terms of Captain Marvel and just go be sad. Did he get screwed out of like like the guy from Batman got screwed? No, his daughter was killed. Oh, that's pretty sad. And then it ends with more death and insanity and fire and all this crazy stuff. So we're gonna move on from that. Show's becoming a downer very quickly. I didn't I, yeah, wait till we get some more of the content of this show. Oh, That's some of the Patsy Walker stuff. Originally, the show was supposed to be on ABC before Netflix picked it up. Oh, I don't think they could have done what they That would have been terrible. They can't do on uh, ABC what they've been doing on Netflix with this show. No, and I remember when that deal came out, like it was like, Netflix picked up five shows from Marvel. And sure, it did. I'll be damned and, if it didn't. Yeah, they're doing it. Like, they've done two seasons. So, originally, the deal was... Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and then an Avengers crossover show. And so far, and I have no idea what the contract looks like now because it has certainly expanded because now there's been a second season of Daredevil. They picked up the Punisher show. It's going to be a Daredevil season three. Like, this contract has expanded from what it was originally announced as. I have no idea what it looks like now. But they're doing good. I like how this show sets up the Luke Cage show, though. Yeah, because Jessica Jones and Luke Cage are very much tied together. Luke Cage, as we mentioned in the last show, is a character who was introduced in the 70s, kind of went away for a bit in the 90s, just due to popularity, essentially, and really not a necessity to have Luke Cage. But he came back in the Alias book, and the very early on, they show him and Jessica in a relationship. But she's, like, following him, like, she's, like, private-eyeing him. Yeah. Private eyes are watching you. The little Hall and Oates. But Luke Cage is a big connection. Jessica Jones. I should take a step back. The way the Alias series was originally released was under Marvel's Max line. And I mentioned this last week, but the Max line was essentially Marvel's R-rated version of comics. Like, we're going to curse and have blood and have sex and... Assaults! The downside of the Max line, it was written a lot for shock value. Like, look at all of our cursing and our sex and our blood. And it was... We're going to do it because we can. That's essentially all it was. It's like the first time you're able to, like, the first time you swear, and you're like, wow, I can swear. And you're like... Um, but that was kind of the max line for a bit. 
And you get a bit of that in the Alias book of like, yeah, we're having sex and we're throwing out swears because we can, because this is Marvel Extreme. Yeah, like, yeah great, good for you. Double dumbass on you. At the end of the Alias line, it comes out that it, this hasn't happened in the Netflix shows yet, and I don't know if it ever will, but Luke impregnates Jessica, and they have a child together. We talked about this last week, and I, I said, does it have superpowers? Because he had the super serum, and she has whatever she She's has. She's kind of retired again, more to raise the child. She still does a little bit, but we'll see. It's a child in the Marvel Universe that will age to adolescence eventually for story convenience, as every child in comics does. Yes. And everyone else stays the same. Some other characters that we get that are a little bit different. We have Jerry Hogarth, played by Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix fame. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, She was um, Trinity. Yeah. And the difference here is this was a gender-swapped character from Jaren Hogarth to Jerry Hogarth. Ah. Uh. Essentially doing the same thing, but a connection to another character that hasn't been introduced yet is... Jaron Hogarth is an attorney for the Rand family, as in Danny Rand, as in Iron Fist, the next show after Luke Cage that we're getting. And we've already seen that character pop up again in Daredevil Season 2 after Jessica Jones. So I feel like that's when we're going to see a little bit more of the gender swap. I mean, it's a really minor character, so it's the gender swap thing is not a huge deal. I like Carrie Fisher. I think she should get more work than she does. Carrie Fisher? Yeah. Like. Star Wars Carrie Fisher? Because you just said Carrie Fisher. What's her name? Carrie Ann Moss. Thank you. There we go. I like Carrie Fisher. She should get more work. <laughs> I think she has a movie that's coming out in a year and a half. Yeah, probably. Just throw that one out there. So many Carries. I love a song by, uh, I think it was Europe. Carrie. It's a power ballad. Carrie, Carrie. A villain that no one was expecting in the series was Nuke. You didn't get that far into it. No. I was going to say, what the hell is Nuke? Duke Nukem? No, not him. I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Remember that game? Did you ever play Duke Nukem? That line was stolen from an 80s movie. Yes. Uh, the one with that Roddy Roddy Piper in it. What yeah. was the name of the movie? Uh, Where he's got these glasses. You can see the, the people, like yeah, the zombies. Yeah. I'm on it. But did you ever play Duke Nukem? Earlier ones. Yeah, like where you could like throw money at the strippers and they dance for you and they flash you their little pixelated boobies. That is not the character we're talking about. Nuke is a Marvel ca- Comics character. He is a veteran of the Vietnam War. He's had cybernetic enhancements, but we don't see that within the TV show. But what we do see is his pills. What we do, um, It's very similar. We see him pop red pills for adrenaline. Extreme adrenaline. Or to disconnect from the Matrix. Yes, but no. Blue pills will bring him back to town, and white pills will kind of keep him balanced in between his red pill popping obsession. But the, the main thing that we don't see is Nuke in the comics has the American flag tattooed on his face. Not in the show? No, not in the show. So it's not a character with a flag tattooed on their face. He's part of the Weapon Plus program, the same thing that brought around Steve Rogers, Wolverine, Deadpool, etc. Uh, wouldn't that also be um, Luke Cage? Or is that really part also of Also Luke Cage, yeah. Didn't you have to pay attention? Hulk doesn't really qualify for that, though, does he? No, only in the movies. Uh, traditionally, he's more of a Daredevil or Captain America villain, but it was no one knew he was coming into the show, so that was kind of a surprise. The big one that I haven't talked about yet is Zebediah Kilgrave, the Purple Man. All of his names are stupid. But they like there's not a whole lot of them in the first couple of episodes. No, they built them. They built them really well. And quite frankly, this version of Netflix is the best version of him that's ever been. In the books, he's not that interesting. Originally, he was created by Stan Lee back in 1964. He premiered as early as Daredevil number four. That's early in Hell's Kitchen. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Very early. Um, they don't mention the name Zebediah in... The show, they're kind of stuck with Kilgrave. Zebediah, that's like Zebediah, Obadiah, those like Dia names. It's a terrible name. I like that kind of name. It's like, makes me feel like they're going to be involved in a barn raising later. In the books, he is a physician turned spy, and then he is desked with chemicals that allows him to release pheromones to control people to do what he wants them to do. So you're telling me like dousing myself in chemicals is a bad idea? 
I still don't think you should do it, but you might want to try just in case. But uh, I mean, like, I shower, that's like a chemical kind of, like, soap. That's water. Soap you, isn't water. Use soap and water. I do use soap and water. Continue to do that. Okay. All for, right. For, uh, forever and always. I'm doing something what? I'm doing something good. There is a really big difference here. I know you didn't get fully into the show, but the idea behind Kilgrave is he speaks, and you just you listen to him. That's what you do. But he's, uh, he's like trying to speak to Jessica Jones, though. Yeah, the way they portray him in the show is that and this is a much more nuanced version than you've ever gotten in the comics, is he's someone who doesn't really have a moral compass because he's always gotten his way. And he meets Jessica, brings her into his life, and from... And just so we're clear, because I'm going to go into really not... There's no way to make jokes in this part of the show. <laughs> from her point of view, everything he does to her is rape. There's yes. He mentally rapes her, he physically rapes her, but from his point of view... People have always done what he says, so he has no way of knowing the difference between people doing what's their actual desire versus what he is saying. And even though he is 100% evil, you have perspective behind what he's doing. Versus in the Alias comics, like I said, Jessica Jones is a character who came in 2001, which at that point, there's a very well-established history within Marvel, and the Purple Man has been around since 1964. Purple Man, or Kilgrave, call him what you will, in the show they only ever refer to him as Kilgrave. He finds Jessica as a superhero character, and he holds a lot of resentment towards other people who do superheroes, like Daredevil, Spider-Man. And big difference between the books and the show is he doesn't physically do anything to her, versus in the show where they had an established relationship, or whatever you want to call it. And what he does in the books, which is comparatively definitely evil. He never touches her in any way, but he makes her want him and beg and cry while he sleeps with people that he picks up off the street just by going like, hey, come upstairs, and we're gonna go have sex. Which is definitely, because he just wanted us straight up evil. Yeah, that because he was just like, Daredevil and Spider-Man have beat me up, so I'm gonna make you beg and cry for it. And never touch you. That's cold. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, like, disturbingly cold. And... <laughs> yeah. The um, the show at least has, like, a level of what he's doing is wrong, but you can at least understand, like, he doesn't understand what the difference between people wanting him and his desires are. Everyone has always done what he said. Yeah. Versus the book where he's like, oh, you're a superhero? Beg me. Big difference. Very much so. Another big difference, like, Jessica Jones is very much into a support group within the comic, and then she goes to visit Kilgrave in jail. That's another really big difference. In the book, it's all about Kilgrave trying to reconnect with Jessica, versus in the book, he's already in prison, and she goes to visit him to talk to him. And the really big difference is, he breaks the fourth wall. He knows that he's in the comic book. And he just taunts her. He's like, don't mess with continuity. Like, all this stuff exists before. Now you're saying that you were had a crush on Peter Parker and all this, and like, make sure you don't mess with anything. She's like, well, if you, it's like, and I'm just the big comic book villain, and he describes how the art should be. He's like, and now you press in here on my face, and I'm gonna do this. And then she's like, well, if you're in a comic book, why don't you change it? He goes, well, I'm not the writer. That's deep. Yeah, it's a little weird. It, the Alias series is really good, but when you, the Kilgrave stuff is probably the weirdest, because we have all of this fourth wall breaking, which wasn't previously established for this character, hasn't been really used since then, or not to my knowledge. And it just comes off as kind of pretentious. And, I, I, just I, my own, and, and I say this as someone who I do enjoy the Alias series as a whole, and the Kilgrave stuff is very dark, but it's still fairly well written, but all the fourth wall breaking comes off as kind of pretentious. This is also coming, this is done by Brian Michael Bendis. I really like him as a writer. He's very, very good, but... yeah. This stuff in particular, it just really pulls you out of the story when he's. We have a character who's so aware that he's a comic book character. Do you think that, like, it's like the show, like, his power of, like, mind control, like, really like, is, like, that strong and overwhelming? If it was that strong and overwhelming, why didn't you just look up and be like, hey, guard, let me out? And the guard's like, oh, yeah, the um, box 8 H. Because something we haven't really seen within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which we did get a little bit in. 
Captain America Civil War is having supervillain prisons, which is where he is. Kind of like we got in Suicide Squad. The well, they were, yeah, they were in Bell Reeve or Arkham. But then you have, uh, what was it, Prison 42? That's yeah, like the one that Sector has... Sector 42, yeah. Like, housing all of the heroes in Civil War. Like That's where he is. He's off in a way where he can't control people. He's behind... But in the, the level Civil War book, that was like a different dimension, wasn't it? Uh, that was the Phantom Zone, yeah, but there was... Oh, God, was it? It's not Rikers and something I'm blanking on it. That's a that's a deep cut from the show back when I read Civil War, and then I remembered it. Yeah, yeah, when they put everyone in the Phantom Zone, but they can't do that in the movies because Fox owns the Phantom Zone, and also Fox! It all comes full circle in the <laughs> show again. Fox. I mean, that was so you're saying it's Fox's fault that Zod got out of the Phantom Zone and leveled Smallville? Oh, I said Phantom Zone. Man, negative zone. I'm oh. mixing up my zones. You're zoning out, dude. The negative zone. I blame Fox. Fox! So many zones. It's going to be your version of Khan. <laughs> Zo- Fox! Zone! Zone Fox! So many bad movies. Um, But those are kind of your major differences between the Jessica Jones TV series versus the alias. Let's put a smile on that face. This week's reading recommendations. I mean, as a quick, quick reading recommendation, I absolutely say read the alias series. It's only in four volumes. It's really good. Brian Michael Bendis is coming back to Jessica Jones in just a couple of months, and I would... God, he's a really good writer. Go... Think what about the new Jessica Jones stuff for the new 52? That's DC. That's DC? I mean, um, is it Rebirth then? Nope, still DC. What's the thing that you had, we had earlier in the year on the show, and it had like the different comic book covers, like the preview thing? Has brought you a preview book. Oh, so what about the stuff with Jessica Jones in that? It's going to be done by Brian Michael Bendis. Pick it up, because, damn, he's a good writer. And he created Jessica Jones. I... Frank, I assume he's going to do a great job with it. One of I think these... of Jessica Jones coming up soon. I want to say November for Jessica Jones number one. Pick it up. One of these days, I'm going to get it right with the new 52. Like, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's in the new 52 and the rebirth. And New 52 ended. That was That's old news now. Uh, so no, new 52, then rebirth? Yeah. i got to study up. I We're all rebirth now. It's better than being afterbirth. Someone made that joke at the TC panel when they were doing all that stuff, and then, boy, they shut them down best. I bet they did. They were talking about, like, Harley. It's like, oh, afterbirth. Like, ha, 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 shut up. Yeah. Ugh. Placenta. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on. Letters to the editor. Here's your letters to the editors. To submit your questions, email us at editorsnotecomics at gmail.com. This isn't so much a physical email question. I had a question posed to me in the last week of like, hey, can I do a show request? Can you tell me who Robbie Reyes is? Uh, I feel like I know the name. Robbie Reyes is the most recent Ghost Rider. Oh, okay. And I was like, no, that can't be a show topic because he had a 12-issue series. That was supposed to be an ongoing. The book got canceled because it was kind of crap. Sorry, fan of the show. But we can do it in this segment because it's going to be shorter and quicker. Robbie Reyes, the newest Ghost Rider. Wait, wait, I know who Robbie Reyes is. He's the new Ghost Rider. Oh, good. Yeah, he's going to be on Agents. Right. He'll be on Agents of Shield. Oh, yeah, I heard that about him. Yeah, it's going to be. He doesn't turn to all bone. He just his head is turns on fire. It's going to be awful, like everything else they do. I thought you were going to ask me a hard question. Come on. Um, who, everybody knows who Robbie Reyes is. So what they were saying, like, they chose to do Robbie Reyes versus other ghost writers because you can have a more um, diverse cast. And I will absolutely give credit to Agents of the Shield for doing that. They have done a fantastic job of not just having a cast of just a bunch of white dudes. How they give you vertical video that wasn't really vertical video? What's, we talked about that, and then I didn't even bring it up in the show. Yeah, there was a first look at Ghost Rider, and they sh- pretended that it was a vertical video, but I watched it on my cell phone, and it wasn't, and it was just a bunch of crap. I feel like we did talk about this on the uh, show. Did we? I don't know. I hate it so much. You hate it more than Fox. ABC! <laughs> Three letter acronyms! I thought for certain you were going to bust in some Jackson 5 there. Da, 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 da. 
Oh boy. It's my fault. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I lost my voice there. So, Robbie Ray. Who is Robbie Reyes? He's the new Ghost Rider. But let's talk about this Ghost Rider because he's a little bit different. Is this like a. Like, there's a Flash in every universe, so there's like multiple Ghost Riders? He's not really Ghost Rider, even though he's under the Ghost Rider mantle. It's not. Because he's not Nicolas Cage. Yeah, with um, hair plugs and CG muscles. Hey, I would do, I would be okay with having CG muscles. Uh, Robbie Reyes was introduced in 2014. He had an ongoing series that went for a total of 12 issues. Robbie Reyes, in the history of Marvel Comics, has only been in 14 comics total. So this is why we didn't really have enough for a whole episode. But you should feel fortunate, fan of the show, that you're getting your own little segment. Uh, Robbie Reyes is a Mexican-American character. He lives in East L.A., where there's a lot of gang violence. He wants to get out of all of that. Isai? So what he does is he enters a street race. Let me guess. It doesn't go well in the street race. And, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job listening to comic book logic. The street race doesn't go well. And Robbie Reyes is gunned down because there are a bunch of pills inside of his car that he's unaware of to give to the villain Mr. Hyde. Is his uh, partner Seek? Mr. Hyde and Seek? No, it's more of a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Uh, but Robbie Reyes is gunned down. He's gonna die, and then all of a sudden this ghost shows up. He's like, hey, Robbie, wanna live? And Robbie says, yeah, kinda wanna. Kinda wanna live. He's like, hey man, my name is... Well, did the dog eat this? Nope, he ate part of it. Eli Morrow. In me, oh, with my... Yes, I'm with, reading about it right now. With my flame and skull, I will join with you, and I will have you be resurrected and not die, but you have to avenge my death. And he's like, down with that. I have my Dodge Challenger over there. I'd like not to die. So, he combines with Eli Morrow, but it turns out, Eli, not a super nice dude. Apparently, Johnny Blaze is also still ghost riding at the same time. Yeah, Johnny Blaze is still the actual ghost rider, the spirit of vengeance. He'll touch you, stare into your soul, and he will burn. Fire. As one will do with Ghost Rider. But it turns out Robbie Reyes joins with Eli, who in reality is a serial killer. Oh, a satanic serial killer who kidnapped and murdered at least 37 people before being fatally shot by police. Yeah, so not a good dude. No, not a good dude at all. But the other thing that Eli did was Robbie has a disabled brother. And the reason that his brother is disabled is Eli pushed his mother down a flight of stairs while she was pregnant. That's not good. Yeah, Eli's not super nice. He, he, he's like Mr. Sinister. Yeah, but <laughs> bringing it back. But Johnny Blaze shows up, stares into his soul, and burns his ass up. a boy, Johnny Blaze. Thank God, Johnny Blaze. But a big difference That's for... That's a pretty badass name, by the way. Johnny Blaze. So. so, Robbie Ray is not quite your traditional Ghost Rider, not the spirit of vengeance, but he has a demonic -y spirit. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is showing him as having just your kind of traditional skull, and they've said, like, vengeance is coming. We'll see what they do, but it might be a bit different. I have no idea. We'll see when the show premieres, when I will be inevitably disappointed. At least it won't be Fox letting you down this time. So much Fox. All of the Fox. I know, my enemy Fox. <laughs> you don't give a Fox. A flying fox. <sighs> Give me a fox and break. Wow. Uh, I And you hate fox more this time of year because of the football. <laughs> yeah, with football preempting Simpsons episodes, I got like a couple of decades of rage. So really, the underlying reason you hate fox is because football's on. So you're saying you hate football, therefore you hate America. That was a stretch. That was a big stretch. Are you saying you don't hate football? I don't hate football. Do you understand football? No. Definitely not. Wow. How do you, like, what don't you understand about football? The rules. Okay. We could do, like, I a... I was like, why are we having such long timeouts? Where's the Simpsons? It's 8-12, damn it. The timeouts aren't that long. They are the end of the game. Well, that's because they gotta get the ads in. Yeah. Like, in a regular, like, real football game where there's not billions of dollars exchanging hands and advertising money. Whoops, doodle, it's the end of the show. Oh, oh, sorry, we talked about football, and then Zach's like, oh, can't talk about that. 
Sports. You know, touch points. You know who I talked about a ton this week? Who? You. Really? You came up in conversation so much. It's insane. At the, at the store? Yeah, I don't think I've ever talked about you this much. Like, at the store. People came in, they were like... Or to me, for that matter. Well, no, it was, it was a weird week. I don't know why. But well, you, what did they... Were they saying positive things this week? Yeah. Like... Wow! No, in all seriousness, like, people were like... Please. I come to the show for the information, but stay for the buffoon. Oh. They, they didn't say that, but I was, Oh. No, you... People really like you on the show. I'm charismatic. They're like, yeah, I like that Jared guy. Oh, thank so you. So I got like people being like, I like that Jared guy, or like, I feel bad for making fun of him, or I'm going to stop making fun of him, and all these people are like, is like, that is what I said. But yeah, you came up a ton in conversation this week. Thank you, Ed Heads. People, people dig you. Wow. No, you came up a lot this week. They dig you on the show. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here on the show. I might not know much, but I'm glad to be here. No, it was weird. I'm like, we... It was weird because people were like complimenting. Well, me. I'm like, are you talking about Jared again? Can you put a picture of me up in the store and be like, employee of the week, employee of the month? Never. I think you don't have to pay me. I give you money to play the pinball machine. Just put my picture up in the yeah. shop. Be quarters. Hey, you know but, what? Twenty five cents. This twenty five cents, man. Ah, uh, but I guess that will do it for this week. You can. Oh, find... now now we get to the good part of the show where we talk about me and people or, liking yeah. me, and now we're gonna end the show. Yeah, or the part of the show where people turn yeah, it off. Build my self esteem up, and now it's like, oh, oh, we gotta build Jared up. Nope, uh, we're out of time this week. Editors Note Comics dot com on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and many podcasting producing sites, and also physically at two ten Water Street in Hollowell, Maine. Any sales going on at the store right now? Um, Jared Appreciation Week. Yeah. Back issue bins, buy two, get two free, yada, yada, yada. It's been there for a bit. I'll turn it off soonish. Jared Appreciation Week. If you come in and say, I like Jared, it's full price. <laughs> yeah. No discount. Uh, and you, you're on the tw- you're on the tweets? I'm on the tweets. I'm on the Twitter sphere. The tweeters? Yeah. Uh, I actually engaged in some Twitter banter with uh, some listeners of the show uh, last week. And maybe I'll make a little more of it. We can do like an Ask Jerry Six on Twitter. Hashtag. Hashtag Ask Jerry Six. So yeah, at Junior Rich. Uh, we will be back next week with a comic book. What's comic book? A topical comic book. I feel like I have to read a comic book in the week, don't I? It's upstairs, yeah. I saw it on the banister. <laughs> I just I, like, no. I knew there was gonna be homework. <laughs> a minor bit of reading. No. <laughs> Pictures and colors, so no. It's DC. Oh, no. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Is it better than Fox? It's always better than Fox. Fox! Yeah. Bye-bye.